Hello and welcome to your 242nd update to the Rolex 24 at Daytona 2021. My name is David Pittard, I'm a Nürburgring champion, international racing driver and driver coach. This is a continuation of the videos I'll be producing that's reviewing all of the major endurance races in 2021. So make sure you stay subscribed not to miss a thing. In today's video, we're gonna run you through the results and action of the five classes at the Daytona 24 hours 2021. Let's start the clock. Starting with DPI, the fastest cars at the Daytona 24. Wayne Taylor Racing took its third Rolex 24 hours in a row and its fourth in five years, which is a pretty amazing feat. However, this year, having previously won all of its other accolades using the, the Cadillac car, this year they used the Acura DPI car. Final pit stop, the Wayne Taylor car only took left side tyres as opposed to taking four tyres, meaning that it got a seven second jump over the Chip Ganassi Cadillac of Renga van der Zande in going into the final stint. Renga van der Zande was on an absolute mission to try and catch his previous team and also capture Renga's third Rolex Daytona 24 hours in a row. With eight minutes to go, he'd closed the gap down from over seven seconds to being right on the back of the Wayne Taylor uh, Cura. However, some super aggressive use of the curbs to close that gap down in such a small amount of time resulted in a rear right puncture with only eight minutes to go, meaning an unscheduled top stop to put another tyre on. The Ally Racing Cadillac came home in second after a spirited drive by Kamui Kobayashi and Mazda made it three different manufacturers on the podium in DPI as they fought from three laps down to come back to make the podium. LMP2 was decided in very similar last minute fashion with the Tower Motorsport LMP2 car pitting with five and a half minutes to go for a splash and dash to make it to the end, meaning that my friend Carl Tilly and his Aero Motorsport squad took honours in LMP2. Number 82 Dragon Speed car finishing three laps down in third place. Riley Motorsport seemed to be the closest guys that came anywhere near a clean run and were able to take home top spot in an LMP3 by multiple laps over Sean Creech Motorsport coming home in P2. On the Motorsport, however, contacts in the first hour off of one of the restarts and then also contact in pit road meant two lengthy stops and delays of which they never recovered. However, making the podium is consolidation. In the last running of the GTLM class at Daytona 24 hours, Corvette were head and shoulders above the other manufacturers. The Corvette 1-2 wasn't without drama in the race, however. The number three car of Jordan Taylor, the same Taylor that is Wayne Taylor Racing and Ricky Taylor, who was driving for Wayne Taylor Racing, who won the race overall, took top honours, driving with Nicky Katzberg, one of my fellow teammates at BMW in previous years, uh, and also Antonio Garcia. However, Antonio Garcia was pulled from the car after 17 hours after he returned a positive COVID test, one of which he was taking to return home after the event, meaning that the, there was only two drivers to finish the race with seven hours to go. The final place on the podium was held by the number 24 BMW M8, driven by Augusto Farfus, John Edwards, Jesse Crone and Marco Whitman. The M8s didn't have the pace of the Corvettes in a straight line this weekend. Third podium in three years for the M8, uh, signs off a successful GTLM era for the M8 in North America. Finally in GT Daytona, it was HTB Winwood who debuted in the series this year, took their first win of the Daytona 24 hours and led home a Mercedes 1-2. And it's also the first time that Mercedes ever won the GT3 or GTD version of the event. A couple of hours remaining, the AF Corsa car again attempted to pass the HTP car around the outside on the way into turn one. However, there was contact side to side, which then sent the Mercedes car pinballing into the Ferrari, sending the Ferrari into the wall. It would then be cat and mouse between two of Mercedes AMG's biggest hitters in terms of their factory drivers. Mario Engel and Raffaele Marciello. The HCP car would run longer, meaning that it would take less fuel as it pitted closer to the end of the race, meaning that Engel could build an 11 second gap. So summary of the race. American Racing always provides a grandstand finish, with their multiple uses of course, full course cautions and wave arounds means that all the classes stay really close and really grouped together. Apart from the LMP3 class, which was just a war of attrition, the largest winning margin of all the classes was only 19 seconds in the LMP2 class. This means that the beginning and the middle of the race isn't all exciting because there's not really many race defining moments apart from cars crashing out. 
any advantage that a car makes or doesn't make is, is normally negated back down again by the use of a caution and the wave around. Overall, I'd advise watching the final four hours though, as once it gets to those final four hours, the cars and drivers start pushing 100% again, the racing gets closer, and those race-defining moments really start to play out. And as mentioned, American racing always provides a grandstand finish. So please tell me what your favourite moment of the race was, who is your favourite class winner? Whilst you're here, please make sure you check out this classic onboard down here, the last time that I raced in America just here and then stayed subscribed up here. Until next time, bis dann.